that two, three, four, five? I don't know. It's got to be A.D., Caruso, <laughs> Montreal. <laughs> uh, Dudley. We need a Dudley interview soon. Lakers extend their road winning streak to 10 in a row to start the year. Frank Vogel, he's speaking with Mike in the media. Good times. Hey, Frank, uh, your thoughts on LeBron's game? <laughs> uh, pretty awesome. You know, just to see that he can uh, he can still turn it up like that. Um Obviously, he wanted to win against his uh, his former team here, and um, you know came out of the gates really strong. Uh, you know, a lot of defensive communication still, even though he had 46 points. You know, still quarterback in our defense, and really just carrying us down the stretch. You know, great defensive energy, but uh, the shot making was just ridiculous. And uh, you know, just a uh, one of those uh, one of those nights for the ages for him. Yeah, he's having one of the best shooting stretches of his career. You know, there was one year, 12-13, where he was 40% uh, from three. But uh, have you have you noticed anything specifically on that end with the, the way that the shot looks, where he's getting it, and just the role of what the offense is? Well, it's, uh, you know, and we've been encouraging him to shoot over the top and, and to beat defenses because, because he shoots it at a high clip, you know, and... Um, you know, defenses are going to try to sag off, try to keep them uh, uh, out of the paint or whatever. Um, you know, this is sort of, you know, if you're going to make a parallel, um, you know, guys like uh, MJ and Kobe uh, went into the fadeaway jump shots out of the post a lot uh, towards the later part of, the, of their careers. Well, he's doing that as well, but he's also, you know, bringing that, that ability to, to beat teams from deep in the modern NBA, which, you know, is uh, an acceptable a part of this era of basketball and uh you know he shoots the shoots the heck out of it uh, from that range and um you know i don't really if i'm playing against him you know, i'm not really sure what i'm doing to try to slow him down when he's shooting the ball that well from the perimeter Kyle? okay frank um before the season there's a lot of talk about the possibility that you know, you guys might find games to rest LeBron. And I think before the season, you were um, a little hesitant to commit to things. And then by the time the season started, um, you sort of said, well, we want to play him as long as he's ready to go. I'm wondering, even like early December, when you guys are just starting training camp, were you already pretty certain that LeBron would, would just play through it and, and just be able to go every night? Or, or how, how, how sure were you on what your approach would be? Didn't know what to expect. You know, um, he was going to have a green light and encouragement uh, to manage his body early in the season um, based on how he was feeling. And, um, you know, we were we were prepared to, uh, you know, to let him sit some games out you know, from time to time. Um, he hasn't needed it. He's felt really good and wanted to stay in there. And, you know, we always give him the green light to stay in there too. So, um, you know, it's going to be that type of – it was that way last year with our group. Uh, it will be this year throughout the whole course of the season, all the way through the 72 uh, before that we get to the playoffs where, um, you know, we trust him to manage his body with the communication with the medical team, um, you know, little bumps and bruises like the ankle that, that it can be sore you know, from time to time from, for him. And, um, you know, we just make these, these decisions on a game by game basis, but the plan a is for him to play. And then if there's a reason uh, why, why he needs a game off, then um, you know, then we'll give him a game off. But they're at 10 and 0 on the road. LeBron James has 46, 19 of 26, eight rebounds. We heard from LeBron earlier speaking with Mike Trudell. How about this? We're going back to Cleveland. We got Anthony Davis now. He's speaking with Mike in the media. Hey, AD, you had it going early uh, in Chicago, and tonight LeBron seemed to be hot from the start. Just what did you see from him? And when he's hot like that, uh, how do you adjust your game, if at all, on the offensive end? Um, yeah, I mean, we get out the way. Uh, you know, he's at home. Like I said, I had to go in Chicago. I was at home. You know, he come back. Uh, you know, he's at home. He gets it going early. So, um, that's what it is. I mean, when he's playing like that, it's a fun, it's fun to watch. You know, it, it's amazing to see the shots he make and the shots he take. Um, you know, he, he's a, he's a hell of a player, great player. Um, and, you know, everyone's cheering for him. He's back at home. So he, you know, we missed it last year. Um, and so he get a chance to come back in and score maybe 45, 46, or something like that. Um, 
back at home. So it's 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 fun to watch. Um, but I think for everyone else, we um, we make shots for them to open the floor up. Uh, and when we made a couple of those shots, he was able to have a paint. Um, he was able to have his jumper, you know, get to that line. He had whatever he wanted. Um, and, and he carried us to, to the win tonight. You know, if you're not having an efficient night or your typical night on offense, do you do you double down even that much more defensively? Or I guess you always bring it on D, right? But is that something that you think, hey, all right, I've got to make sure to contribute this way on this end? Um, yeah. I mean, I pick it up more defensively. I uh, try to offer the rebound. Um, try to set good screens uh, to get other guys open. Um, I just try to do the other other things that are, maybe don't show up in the, in the, on the box score. So, uh, you know, I try to find other ways to impact the game and, um, you know, let, and let the offensive side just come naturally. Dave? AD, uh, LeBron had that block on Colin that was uh, deep the block after the challenge. There was the, the turnaround shot on the baseline. There was the logo three. Was there any – moment in that kind of run he had that that really stuck out to you like okay he's really locked in this is a special night for him he had 19 in the first 17 in the first or something like that oh it's over they're it like it's one of those nights for him um he was you know getting to the basket he was hitting his three um you know getting to the mid-range hitting his his turnaround so you know it, it, he wasn't missing he had a very efficient game and um, and then late in the game, like you say, hit, I think, three threes, uh, you know, got to the basket, got to the steal for the dunk. Um, so he was he was everywhere on the floor, uh, making shots from everywhere. And um, But after the first quarter, I knew it was going to be a good night for him. Kyle? Hey, D, um, I know you uh, uh, uh are sort of a perfectionist and, and probably are already thinking about the next game, especially when it comes to your defense. Um, what gave you guys the most problems that, that Cleveland was able to do? Was it the pace? Was it the rim pressure? Where was the biggest pressure for you guys? Um, I think they, they might be number one in the, in the league and deflections and, and, you know, forcing turnovers. And we were um, kind of fed into that in the first half. I got a lot of deflections. Uh, we had a lot of good looks in that third quarter. Um, you know, we just missed a lot of wide open shots, but um, you know, in their pace as well. You know, like they we got a lot of young guys that play fast. Um, starting with Colin Sexton, who pushes the ball up the floor. Um, you know, and, and find guys and uh, Osman. You know, got hot from from three, you know, flying up pins uh, down screens and, and things like that. So, um, you know, they're a young team. They they play hard. They play fast. Um, you know, they get out in transition and they force turnovers and. Uh, we had a lot of we had a couple turnovers early that kind of got them going. And AD, um, obviously LeBron did what LeBron did, but um, how important were th those Kuzma offensive rebounds in the fourth quarter, and, and then like some of those Caruso deflections and steals? Seems like the, those plays when you guys were really sputtering, kind of kind of kept giving you a little life. Yeah, um, big time plays. You know that's what Kuzma do. He, he, Crashed that offensive glass all the time, and uh, I think he got three on the one possession and kicked it out to AC. And I think AC hits the three. Um, and he had one on the other end in the first half as well. Um, AC, you know, pressure on the ball. You know, Colin drives to the basket. He gets a strip um, late in the game, and so all those plays are huge plays and, and momentum boosters for us, especially when we kind of going back and forth with the team and we kind of um, were stagnant on the hundred for a while. We, we didn't score. Um, our defense is kind of you know, kept us ahead and, and, you know, those big offensive rebounds by Kuhn. So, um, you know, two guys who, who, you know, don't get highlighted enough, but, you know, they do all the dirty work for us for sure. I'll take two more. Bill or Hey, AD, in this year and a half you've played with LeBron, what have you learned about him and what separates him? I mean, you're, you're universally considered a top five player in the league also, um, you know, and all these other guys around the league. But what is it that, do you, in, in your opinion, separates him from some of the other superstars in the league and that he's able to go out and do the things he does? Um, I haven't played with any other, you know, the top guys in the league. So I can't, I don't know what those guys do. I don't even tell you what, what I see, you know, from, and probably gonna be the same thing that everybody else say, but um, just being here and being around him, um, you know, the way he,